Okay, today for Autodesk Inventor 2012, we're going to uh, work on some work planes, some content center fasteners, um, some of the more advanced type of skills that you're going to be needing. So what we're basically tasked to do today is to create a handle for a slot machine. And so if you think about a slot machine, um, on the side of the machine, most of the people now, I guess, just push buttons, I guess, I don't know. But on the side of the machine, there's a, there traditionally has been a handle that you pull. Well, to hold that handle on, we have to create a small hub type of a system. And so that's what we're going to demonstrate how to create today is a, is a hub um, that is at an angle which requires a, a substantial use of work planes and how that is done. Additionally, we'll also show you how to utilize some fasteners um, to hold this particular hub on to the actual uh, machine itself. So to begin, we're going to go ahead and, and begin this particular process um, with a new uh, English assembly file. So we're going to do a top-down style design. And the concept of the top-down style design is that we can create and have interactive creation between the parts as we develop the assembly. So I chose the Create button, and when we choose the Create button, it comes up and immediately asks us to rename the part. So we're going to go ahead and call this uh, Handle Connector. And it's going to be a standard part file that we're going to create. So we're not creating a sub-assembly or an assembly inside of an assembly. It's just a basic assembly. And we're going to start off with the handle connector. And we're going to put it in our uh, folder that we're working with. We'll choose OK. And then it's going to ask us, well, what plane do we want to create it on? And one of the concepts that you can actually utilize is the ability for the XY YZ XZ plane. And basically what we're talking about here, let me turn it to 3D, is that I can start on different plane surfaces. So when my object isn't naturally working from the top down or the front to the back, I can rotate or create the object at a different orientation. And to do that, I can turn on the XY, XZ, YZ plane. And I've done that, or I've highlighted it through opening up the origin folder, and I can turn on the visibility of this plane. So what I just did there was I clicked on the YZ plane and said, OK, I want my starting surface to be on that YZ plane. And you can now notice that my sketch is no longer oriented in the front plane, it's now oriented in relationship to the right hand side. Can we reset this to our front view? Yes. So once we have a part or we have something created, we can reorient the front view of this object to this vertical plane, which is kind of nice to be able to do that. We're going to begin by sketching, we'll go back to a plan view by picking the right side, we're going to go ahead and sketch a general shape of this connector. So this connector is kind of unique because it's got a center line and so we'll create a center line directly along the center of the zero zero. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line, right mouse click and choose done. I'm going to then select the line again, and you can see that it's it's been highlighted here, this one right here. And I'm going to change it to a center line, because I want the center line option to be available. And from there, we're going to go ahead and choose line. And notice that when I chose the line command again, the center line went away. And so I can start a new line 
Oh, I noticed that my center line information also went away. I'll have to fix that in a second. Um, we can start a new line to create the basic hub. Okay, you can see that, that that my new sketch is gigantic compared to my original line. So I grabbed and stretched the center line to be as large as that object. And in essence, the center line should technically end at the end of the top line. If it went too long, we actually run into a problem uh, when we go into a later step. So right now, this thing's pretty gigantic. And how do I know that? Because when I was sketching it, that told me that that was almost two feet long. And we're talking it's a slot machine, so we're not looking, unless we're working with one of those giant slot machines that usually, you know, they're like five, six feet wide, then you might have a two foot uh, connector for the handle. But in essence, we're going to be looking at a part significantly smaller than that. The overall height here is not going to be 19 inches. Um, we will be updating and working with that. But I do want to keep this dimension here approximately one inch. And the overall distance of thickness, we're going to go with um, 3.75. And that's going to cause a problem, because look what happened. I also need to make sure that I make a distance um, and if we don't like the 3.75 and that's going to mess you up, then back up a step and then do a second dimension for the height of this line first. So instead of 6.4, uh, we're going to go 3.75 total, so we'll split that uh, uh, 3.75, 2.75, so it's going to be 2.75 divided by 2. And now this can be 3.75. Okay, that's looking better. It's looking smaller. We'll now work on the dimensions horizontally. Same scenario. I'm going to go from, I need to move this over. So we're going to choose pan so I can see it and dimension it from this line to the center line. Now whenever you dimension to a center line you get a center diameter, a, di a uh, linear diameter um, base dimension. If you don't like that linear diameter that shows you the overall distance, we'll right mouse click and choose to take the check mark out of linear diameter and now we've just got a standard dimension. That says it's 30 inches. Well in essence this thing only needs to be about two and a half. Uh-oh. And so if that's two and a half, we want to make these about one. And instead of dimensioning the bottom, let me just undo that. Instead of dimensioning the bottom, let's just use the equal tool. So we'll just select the equal, pick the first item, pick the second item, and so now we've got our basic handle. So again, the key is don't get totally um, bent out of shape. If things aren't going your way initially and things aren't setting up properly, just undo, figure out what dimensions are key, and then work from there. All right, I'm going to move. When I choose done or hit the escape key, I can then start bringing the dimensions in a little bit closer to the object. So that way they're not all over the place. And I can see them. Perfect. So that's looking better. So now I've got this the shape of an object and I need to revolve this. So I'm going to go ahead and finish it. We're going to use the revolve tool and it's going to revolve the shape. 
It's going to be 360 degrees, looks great, and that's exactly what I need. But here's the deal. I need to put a handle on this diagonal surface because the slot machine handle is on that type of a surface. So I need to figure out how to get a work plane on the surface so I can locate a point. So the first step to do this, and this is a two-step process, the first step is that I need to put an axis in. So I can just highlight the edge, any circular surface, and put a axis down the middle. Okay, so now I've got a center line. I'll create a work plane based on this axis, and I have to choose one of the origins. It's either going to be XC or it's going to be XY. We'll choose XY. And we don't want it at 90 degrees, we'll leave it at zero. All right, so now that we've got our work plane created down the center line in the XY plane, you'll notice when I rotate it, one side of the work plane is purplish or blue, and the other side is a light brown or gold or copper. Well, the light brown is the positive side, that's positive Z. The blue side is negative Z of the plane. Just want to make sure that you're aware of that. Now when you have a work plane, that just created a space for geometry that can help us. I'm going to need to put a sketch on this work plane so I can highlight the edge of the work plane, right mouse click, and I can say new sketch. Or one of the other options that I could have done is left mouse click on the work plane, and it will also pop up a new create sketch button. Both ways work. So I just put a new sketch on this work plane. But I really don't want to look at the object in, an, uh, in a planar or an orthographic mode. I want to go back to the house and go back to an isometric mode. Because what I'm interested in is not the 2D surface, I'm interested in this diagonal line. And what I need to do is project geometry. And so the geometry I need to project is the diagonal line of the surface I need to draw the hole on for the hub, or for the handle connector. And so when we have this, um, I selected project geometry, projected just this line to that sketch, and I'm done. That's it. Now I've got a piece of geometry that I can use to help locate a position on this surface. All right. We'll choose work plane. I'll pick that geometry as a point on my plane. And I'll pick the surface that I need to put it on. Uh-oh. The direction of the plane is blue, or the color of the plane is blue, which means the direction is in the wrong direction. Well, one of the cool things that you can do with work planes is flip the Z. So if I right mouse click onto the work plane, I can flip the normal. When you flip the normal, and sometimes you're going to see this as a red and black with two arrows and that's just a flip of a normal. And what you're doing is you're flipping the positive Z. Notice now it's copper, light brown, as opposed to blue. Let me go ahead and zoom in on this. We're going to do a zoom window to make it a little bit larger. Because when I'm using my mouse wheel to zoom in, it's a little too much of an aggregate today for it to move quickly. It's moving too quickly, actually. So the zoom window works OK. Now I've got a surface, and I have a line. And that line is centered, because we can look at the top. That line is centered with the center of the object, which is pretty cool. Well, what I can do now is now that I've got a work plane on there, I can left mouse click on the work plane, the edge of the work plane, and create a sketch. So now I've got a sketch on this diagonal surface. I can project that line, because that line is still there, I can project it to my current surface, 
and use that to mark a center point for a hole using the hole command. 